Hey Hotshots, Jess with Emotional Fire Academy, here today to talk about three ways to turn the hurtful behaviors of others into an opportunity for our own personal growth. Welcome to Emotional Fire Academy, I'm Jess, I'm so glad you're here. This is a channel where we provide tactical mindfulness tools for you to live your most exciting, epic, amazing, healthy whole life. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, so we're back in Studio B today, <laughs> Studio Bedroom. Um, I Yeah, because I had some things I wanted to show you on the board. So here we are, back at the old, the old uh, original starting place. So, and we have the emotional fire triangle out today. So I'm going to provide you an example from my own life that I've had to face because I am human too. The same tools I teach you, I use for myself, and I know they work. That's how I know they work. I test them on myself. I practice what I preach. So... Um, that will be our example today for going through. So briefly, my scenario is uh, throughout my life, I have programmed a trigger for myself um, through meaning and perspective that uh, is, it's really hurtful to me when I'm reaching out to someone and they don't respond to me, right? And maybe I've made multiple attempts to reach out to this person and they flat out like do not respond to me at all kind of ghosty, like, but it's always unexpected. I, I never seem to see it coming. I'm interacting with this person and then suddenly they like stop talking to me. It's a weird pattern <laughs> that somehow keeps popping up in my life. But, uh, and so I actually had this happen a couple times in the last two months. And it made me realize exactly, you know, it made me take a look at all of these elements and really be like, okay, how can I, I need to reprogram this trigger. I need to heal this because this is an opportunity for my growth. Instead of continuing to let this pattern perpetuate for another 40 years. <laughs> so let's address it, right? When you put, I look at it like salt on a wound, right? If, if someone else is the salt, you know, and they, they pour their salt onto us. If there's a wound there, it's going to hurt and be really painful. If the skin is whole and healed and intact, the salt just kind of falls right off and nothing happens. So this is the differentiation between, you know, and, and what are those two states, you know, having a wound versus being healed. The, that is where our work, our work as you know, someone that wants to be healed, someone that wants to be unruffled, someone that wants emotional regulation, someone that wants to be stable inside. Our work is to just recognize, ouch, that hurt. I feel the salt in the wound and get to a place where the salt kind of rolls off. The salt hits the skin, but the skin is intact and the salt kind of falls on the ground. And you know, we're doing this constantly with all the information and the data that we filter throughout our lives, throughout the course of the day, through all of our senses. You know, some of it really triggers us. The majority of it doesn't. The majority of it just passes through our senses and out and it's gone. So, and we want to move our work as, per, you know, in personal growth is to move from having that emotional reaction, that hair trigger to letting it just be one of the things that we experience and don't really attach that huge emotional reaction to. So, uh, yeah, so back to the example. So uh, this recently happened. I said it happened a couple times to me where people just flat out stopped responding to me when I was trying to reach out to them and be kind or connect with them or get together with them. And they initially expressed interest and then suddenly it was like nothing. Like they wouldn't respond to text message, it wouldn't respond to a call. And that brought this feeling up for me of, oh, it was really hurtful. It was really painful, right? So let's look at, let's look at this example from, okay, so what's the first thing we need to consider in a situation like this? Because a lot of people leave comments on my channel about situations very similar to this. It's like, my dad said this to me, my mom said this, my friend did this, you know, so this can be the behavior of someone else, something they said to you, a comment they made, their, in my case, their failure to show up at all, you know, their complete absence. 
Uh, so they're not really saying or doing anything, and that that is the problem in itself. <laughs> so, so yeah. So the first thing we want to do, our first growth opportunity, when we have a situation where we're like, "Ouch, that hurt." Okay, I recognize I have a wound. I want to be whole in this area. Um, is to look at, and we go to the emotional fire triangle. Obviously, the three components of what cause our emotions are the combination of the perspective we're taking, our conditioning, so our habits, the habits we've practiced, and then the meaning we're making of something. So let's go to our perspective. This is kind of an eggs in one basket problem. So I look at my example and I think, why am I putting all my eggs in the basket of this person and wanting them so badly to reach out to me that it's upsetting me, you know? Often, again, we do this unconsciously is we're putting this person on a pedestal, right? We're putting their response on a pedestal or what they're doing on a pedestal as evidence of something about ourselves. So in this case, I was, you know, it was like my perspective, my attention to this is the issue, right? I'm putting all of my eggs in that basket, in that moment of expecting her to get back to me. And when she's not, and it just is like, my attention keeps fixating, right? So our first growth, how do we grow in this situation? Uh, Recognizing it's an eggs in one basket problem. So we back up, right? We need to change our perspective in some way. So how can we do that? We zoom in or out. So zoom back a little bit. I like to zoom back and get a wider perspective. And in doing that, I'd be like, okay, does it really matter if she gets back to me or not? Like, does it really in a bigger picture? Like I I have other friends and many other acquaintances and many other opportunities to make new acquaintances. Does it really matter if she gets back to me or not right now? And the answer was no. (laughs) It was like, okay, it's really, it's not that big of a deal. Perspective, again, so change your perspective. This allows us to grow in being able to be flexible with our perspective and to release our grip on our attention to something that we think was a problem or an issue or shouldn't be happening. You know, when we develop the flexibility to change perspective, that's a growth opportunity for us. So number two, then we go over to meaning, language. You know, what are we doing with our language in this situation? We have to look at the meaning um, of what the equation that's going on. Usually we have these equations or stories of like X plus Y equals Z. And that's, you know, I'm anticipating that. And when it doesn't happen, oh, that's when the emotional reaction comes up. So there's a wonky equation or story going on here. In my case, it was, I trusted this person. I think that we're friends. And because we're friends, she has to get back to me. So do you see how that can be when she doesn't get back to me? Then I begin to question the other parts of the equation. Like, okay, are we not friends then? Are we not friends? (laughs) You know? So the question, you know, if you can ask yourself, is is that true? Does that necessarily do all parts of those equation, that equation hold true? Can I still trust her to be my friend and allow her whatever she's going through, whatever is happening to her, allow her the space not to respond and I can still be okay, that it doesn't mean anything about me. It has nothing to do with me. It actually has probably has to do with her and what's happening in her life. You know, so we start, if we can look at, identify the story or the equation that we're telling and pick it apart a little bit and really question, is this true? Is this true? Can I still be friends with this person and allow them the space to behave this way or allow them the space to um, go whatever they're go through, whatever they're going through without taking it personally, without assuming that it means anything about me, you know, and this is again, a growth opportunity in that we get more flexible with the meaning that we make of things, the meaning, this is all about the meaning we're making, the story we're telling. We get more flexible with meaning. We can, we can play with meaning and we can adjust meaning again to keep, you know, our sanctity intact of this doesn't mean anything about me. 
Because if we immediately go to, this means something about me, I am offended by this, this means something about me, we can grow and this, or, you know, this is about them and what's there happening and maybe have some compassion or pity or just unconditionality for them of it's okay. Like we can still be friends despite this. I'm not saying that we should put up with, you know, verbal abuse, physical abuse, things like this. Uh, but being able to change the meaning gives more space and is able to maintain our higher, higher motivations. Cause what's my higher motivation? I would like to stay friends with her. Like that's, that is my bigger motivation than all this. I would like to maintain the friendship. So recognizing what's your bigger motivation and adapting the meaning, telling a story that supports that higher motivation, if that makes sense. And then, so that's our growth, how we can grow then from that. And then number three is the third way we can do this is recognize that whatever we do with number one and two, whatever we do consistently is what becomes a habit. And our conditioning, our habit is the third, the bot, the base of the triangle. And the growth opportunity is healing that trigger, right? Unprogramming the pattern, reprogramming the pattern. So again, whatever we choose to do, you know, on both of these top two sides consistently is what becomes then settles to the bottom and becomes the habit that feels very unconscious. And that's how the trigger was formed in the first place, right? People in my past who didn't show up for me, who suddenly stopped talking to me, created this program where I had this story then come up of I'm not I'm not worthy when this person does this I am not worthy I'm I'm not seen I'm not heard I'm invisible this feeling of invisibility see how that so every time this happens you know no matter from that point on once that program was installed that's why I'm feeling the pain in the first place from this situation right because this is an old program that got installed a long time ago. And then when it comes up, that's how I interpret the situation. That's how I interpret it. Not that that is the bigger truth of what is going on, but that's how I automatically interpret it. And then I feel the emotional reaction. So how do we heal the trigger and unprogram? We do something different. We take a different perspective and we tell a different story consistently, right? And it doesn't have to take a lot of time. People hear habit, they think, oh my, three weeks, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to do this all the time. It's a lot of effort, a lot of work. It doesn't have to be. Um, that's a limiting belief. Because <laughs> just in these two instances, right? I said I had this happen twice. The first time in May, this happened with a, a guy friend of mine. Um, I was really upset. I was really upset about it. I was really upset, but I did these two things. I decided, I recognized, I'm like, ow, this hurts, this hurts a lot. I decided to take a different perspective. I backed up and I thought, does it really matter to me whether this person responds to me right now? No. And then I told a different meaning of like, this is whatever he's going through, however he's interpreting this, this is on him. I don't have to assume that there's some, something lacking or wrong with me because he's behaving like this. So then when it happened again recently with a female friend, it was much less, I felt a little bit of the pain and I felt myself going back into the trigger, but I was much more removed and I did the same thing. So I'm going to reprogram. I took a step back. Is it really matter if this person responds to me right now or not? No. I'm going to go put my eggs in other baskets, talk to people who do respond to me, put my attention on them. And meaning, does this mean I'm not friends with this person? Do I need to set a boundary and run away and, you know, do a protective maneuver to try and prevent this from happening again? You know, sometimes that can be, if you feel strongly about it, the answer can be yes, but it can also be, again, what's your higher motivation? Do you want to stay friends with this person? Okay, then a little bit of unconditionality might be the, be the key. And again, your situation is, is unique to you. So, um, so yeah, and then I told a different story. I'm just like, you know, she's probably going through some stuff. I'm going to be patient and just let this settle down. And I'm sure I'll hear from her, you know, when it's, when it's time and just trusting in that and not being like, oh, I have to unfriend her. Like I said, put up a boundary. 
So yeah, so the conditioning can happen pretty rapidly if, again, you just decide to address these two. Every time it comes up again, you feel the salt in the wound. Ow, 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 this hurts. You recognize, is this a pattern? Is this, what's the pattern? What's the meaning I'm making, the story I'm telling, and the perspective I'm taking on this? Shift it, keep shifting it, keep shifting it, and then it won't matter. And then again, that problem, the trigger, the habit passes back into the data stream that you just kind of observe and release and is gone. And the old story and the old perspective have been replaced with the new story and the new perspective. Let me know what you thought. If this was helpful, I'd love to hear a comment below. Drop me a comment. Let me know. I try to respond to every comment. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.